All right, the truth teller here, the Knowles get it done against Miami. Tight ball game, again, a fourth quarter victory, had the comfort behind the do it, really for the first time this year uh, in that particular fashion, getting it done uh, late in the game, fourth quarter win in uh, Florida State. Now they're sixth in a row against Miami Hurricanes. My name is Rick Ballou. You can get me Ballou. 1010XL on Twitter, show each and every day, 3 to 7, sometimes 3 to 6 here in the fall because of Jaguars programming. Uh, you can also get us online at 1010XL.com. FM, yeah, 92.5 over there as well. All right, you know what? They came out, guns blazing. Are you kidding me? Dalvin Cook, the hamstring, phenomenal. Golson, his best game yet, some design runs. Uh, really drove it down the throat, but it has been the problem this year for Florida State, the inability to put teams away. The inability to rip out the jugular and put, you know, the stake right through the heart early and then coast the rest of the way through. Uh, this is something that I think Noel fans have come to expect. It's going to be 60 minutes of football. Uh, it's been that way really um, the last year plus, all right? 34 to 35 have gone the way of Florida State, but it doesn't seem to be easy, at least as of late. A couple of things here. They faced a really good passing quarterback in Kaya, and absolutely he exposed center field. Listen, there's no way that Marshall should have gone out when he did uh, with that hit. Hunter was put back there. James was back there. James wasn't able to rush the quarterback as he did so successfully uh, the week prior to that against Wake Forest. Overall, it's a nice win for Florida State. I also think they played some pretty good football. Uh, I believe that as well. Not only offensively, but I thought they did a nice job against Miami against the run. Uh, the disappointment, again, was their pass coverage. But remember, this is the best passing football team that Florida State's going to face this year. Okay? Watson will be a challenge at Clemson, but he doesn't, in my opinion, he's not as good, of a, as, good excuse me, as a passing quarterback uh, that Kaya is. All right? So it's on the Louisville. That is up next now for Florida State. Again, Miami now, Al Golden fighting for its job. They gave it their best shot. You knew they would, even though they lost to Cincinnati. There was no question they would show up, play hard. Florida State gets it done, moves through Miami, for the most part without any injuries. Here comes Louisville. I said one week ago, here, live from Baloo Sports Bar, and all week long on the radio, I'm more concerned about Louisville than I am Miami. Why is that, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. Noon ball game, bye week for Louisville, and the fact that you're coming off of such an emotional high Will these kids be able to get up for a noon ball game? Will the crowd be able to get up for a noon ball game coming up this Saturday? To me, that is a serious situation. I mean, this is Louisville, after all. This is the home of what? Uh, Louisville Slugger. How about this old Reggie Jefferson? Louisville Slugger I got here. Reggie, a Tallahassee boy. Man, I miss when he played uh, for the Boston Red Sox. He used to give me the, the best seats, whether it was in Boston or down the road in Tampa. Really miss Reggie, and he's a Florida State fan. Miss Reggie is a ball player. He's still around doing some nice things. You know, Louisville's a basketball school. Louisville is what? So why am I so worried about Louisville? I'll tell you why. Bobby freaking Petrino. Bobby Petrino doesn't even know what down it is. Bobby Petrino doesn't know how many timeouts he has. What Bobby Petrino doesn't care about, though, is in-game situations, and he is such a threat because he's as daring as any big-time coach in all of college football. I sat with this man in Pinehurst at the ACC meetings, and we talked about Auburn early. We talked about Clemson early. I mentioned Florida State. Remember a year ago? Before we sat down, it was, what, three touchdowns in the, in the tank? Louisville was up in that ball game. It took a Jameis come-from-behind victory in order to get it done on that particular night. And what a football game it was. Bobby Petrino's eyes almost fell out of his head when I talked to him about the opportunity of facing Florida State. It's been a bad year for Louisville. They let one get away against Auburn. They let one get away against Clemson. Again, he made a lot of mistakes, but this is a young football team, and they have a freak at quarterback. It is going to be very difficult trying to contain Jackson. This guy has a ton of talent. What I like here for Florida State, though, is it's going back to the option style of quarterback. The running style of quarterback is what I'm really trying to say. Not a great passing quarterback. And obviously after what we saw last week against Miami, that is the major concern right now for FSU, their passing defense. I like their chances against a quarterback who can run. 
albeit this kid can flat out move. Hopefully, Terrence Smith is able to come back and play. As of Wednesday, still no word there. Again, you're going to get Marshall back. That'll help. You're going to be able to put Derwin James on the line of scrimmage in pass rush situations. That's going to help. Heck, for all we know, they could put him up there and have him uh, shadow Jackson uh, when it's all said and done in what we would assume would be obvious pass rush situations. I have uh, thought of this now for a week and a half, and I'm about this close from picking Louisville, but I'm not. I'm going to stay with Florida State to win this ball game. I think they have more talent. I think Dalvin Cook's going to come out and play a good football game. I think Golson has bought in. He has not turned the ball over. He is not making mistakes. And I'm finally now starting to feel a little bit more comfortable about the top three wide receivers. What a game by Whitfield. Bobo has his game day drop, but then he seems to make a couple of nice plays. And Rudolph's playing some pretty good football as well. Defensively, again, they're down a little bit in numbers uh, at linebacker and in the contain. Uh, but hopefully, you know, and we got to take our cap and tip it right now to the incredible effort, uh, you know, by Andrews last week to come back and, and play in that football game after being told that he was not going to be able to give it a go. That was a huge, huge boost overall uh, for Florida State for him to come on out there and play. I mean, this kid started as a freshman, got it done again as a sophomore, and came up and played some pretty good football on half a leg uh, the other night. So Nate Andrews deserves all the credit that he has been receiving. Folks, here's what I got for you. My dad's flying in from Boston. My brother's driving in from Tampa. See you over on God's Country, Saturday afternoon for Louisville. Looking forward to it, and here's what I got. I think the Knowles, again, just barely, may find a way and knock off Louisville to win their 35th out of 36 ball games. If you're in Jacksonville on Sunday, I'll see you right here on the home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's Sports Radio, 1010 XL and 92.5 FM. I'll be on the sideline as the Jaguars will play host to the Houston Texans. So whether it's Tallahassee or Jacksonville, look forward to seeing you sports fans coming up this weekend. You can get me on Twitter, Blue, at 1010XL. Listen to the show each and every day, either 3 to 6 or 3 to 7, again, on 92.5 FM or 1010XL. Stream us online at 1010XL.com. Folks, enjoy the baseball. Enjoy the football. And we'll talk to you next week, again, live, right here from Baloo Sports Bar.